So in my last video, we unboxed this beautiful pair of Puget Sound garter snakes. They came in from Steven Ball in the Netherlands. These were just amazing. You could check out that video. These snakes have beautiful blues and turquoise colors. So I wanted to make them a beautiful little bioactive enclosure. So we're gonna do that today, everything from scratch, and we're gonna start right now. Hey guys, welcome to another video here at Cloud Colubrids. Today's an amazing day. It's a scorcher outside, it feels like 100 degrees. I was just out there watering some of the plants, so I'd rather do the video in here, stay nice and dry and cool. Today we're gonna be building a bioactive enclosure from my pair of Puget Sound garter snakes I just got from the Netherlands. Thank you, Stephen Ball. So we're gonna be setting that up and we're gonna have some fun. First, I'm just gonna grab a cup of coffee I'm about to brew and we'll get to this video. All right, guys, I'm gonna go get my coffee, but I just wanted to tell you, Brian from Seattle left a comment on my unboxing video and he said, I'm saying it incorrectly Pudget sound is not the way you say it. He said it is Pujit, Pujit or Pujit. I'm not sure, it sounds a little awkward, maybe because I'm from New York, Pudget just rolls off the tongue. But if I am saying it wrong, I'm sorry. And I'm gonna look into actually hearing people say it that are from the area, so I know exactly how to say it. So let me go get that coffee. It's a little odd, but that's the correct way to say it. And I want to just thank Brian for leaving that comment. All right, so the coffee's ready. I feel great right now. I just need a little bit of this caffeine. We finished that bag of coffee, that good Stumptown brew. When I go to the marketplace to get some more coffee, I'll take you guys along with me. But I just want to make a quick toast and give everybody my blessings for the weekend. All right, so we're about to start building and I'm gonna show you all of the ingredients I'm using for the soil. Now we're just gonna make a quick toast to this build off and again to Stephen Ball for these beautiful snakes he sent me. I was watching a YouTube video from his snake room that somebody did about a year ago. Real nice video. He started in 1982 collecting garter snakes from the wild and they didn't even have any good information back then. So he went through so many problems to be the expert he is today. So we're gonna make a toast to him, a toast to you, and we're gonna get to this video. All right, so let's get into what soil we're using. If you wanted to, you could get all the ingredients to make ABG mix, or you could buy ABG mix already made online, but it's a lot more expensive. If you're gonna get the ingredients yourself, sometimes the tree fern fiber is hard to find. So this mix is almost identical. The ratios are a little bit different, minus the tree fern fiber, and you're gonna save money doing it this way. It works great for me. I have ABG mix, and I don't think it was that much better than this. It's about the same. So we're gonna start off with some jungle mix. This is fire bark, real small pieces of fire bark wood, and peat, sphagnum moss, chopped real fine. Now, I like to use this orchard mix. You can get all the ingredients separately, but it comes like this, all in one bag. And it is just amazing. It has fire bark, it has charcoal charcoal is definitely needed for these bioactive setups and it also has some perlite now you might want it a little bit more finely ground than this this is a pretty chunky mix but that's okay it just gives that added drainage we're gonna use some sphagnum moss now these are from my last build when i did my cali red-sided garters i saved all the extra that's why all the bags are open 
And one of the most important ingredients is this Eco Earth. There it is, it comes from Zoomed. Now this stuff you can buy already ground. It comes in like a nice size bag. You could just pour it right in. It looks like a soil consistency. It's a little bit more expensive, but if you're in a rush, that's the way to go. If you buy it like this, it comes in a brick form. It's, it's a lot cheaper this way. All you gotta do, soak it in water. It expands and you're ready to go. We're gonna do that right now and then we're gonna start building this enclosure. So you just gotta find something to put the Eco Earth brick in. We're using half of a brick for this build since we have some already made. And then you just wanna cover the brick with water let it sit for about 20 minutes and it'll expand and turn to soil. And I have this bag from when I made my bioactive enclosure for the Cali red sided garters. This was excess, I wrapped it up real good. So this is already made, it has all the ingredients, but it's not enough. So we're gonna put this plus add all the fresh ingredients and that should be enough. So I like to position the plants in the tank before we put the soil, just to get a feel for how you want it to look. And now we're just gonna mix all those ingredients I just showed you. This was the soil that I saved from my last build. So we're gonna put that in there, followed by the jungle mix. And this was the Eco Earth brick. It looks beautiful, we're gonna mix that in. Put a little bit of the orchard bark, followed by that sphagnum moss. You want this to really get incorporated well, get everything mixed nicely. Now we're using a nice deep layer around four to six inches. So now we're gonna spread out some of that sphagnum moss, break it up, spread it around. You could add more or less, it's your choice. There's no recipe. And now for the plants, this is my favorite part. Just remember, put the plants that get bushy and tall towards the back. This fern will fill out nicely and provide a lot of shade and hiding spots for the snakes. I have this mini Fatonia. This is a carpeting plant, so it's gonna grow low and create a nice forest floor. So now the best type of plants for these terrariums are low to medium light plants that like partial shade. Those will thrive in these environments and you wanna always provide multiple hides, especially I have a couple of snakes going in here between those nice plants once they start getting bushy and these cork rounds that you can find anywhere. They're not too expensive. That should be perfect. So everything's coming out perfectly so far. Those hides look good. The plants look perfect. And um, now it's time to decide what kind of a branch or a vine I'm gonna use. Now I have this man-made vine which you could bend in different posi positions. Just stick it in the soil on both ends and it gives the animal a lot of room to crawl around. And then I have this natural, real branch that I pulled off of a dead tree. I sterilized it. I have a big piece of this. I keep pulling off of that big branch. And this is what I'm gonna use. I think it's more fitting for a snake. It's more natural. That might work really good with like a tree frog because you see like these little edges of a frog with the soft skin was to land on one of these. It could maybe hurt them where that'll be perfect. There's a time and place for those vines, but this is the winner.
So for these snakes, we want a real small water bowl. They're warm climate snakes and we put succulents towards the front. That's gonna be the hot side. I have a heat lamp on that side and we're gonna give it a good mist, get those roots nice and moist. Going forward, these snakes don't like a lot of moisture. The ground should remain dry. So we'll spot spray these particular plants that need a little bit more water, just keep those roots moist while maintaining a dry surface for the succulents and the snakes put a little leaf litter on top. And now we added some more branches. I had to take a look at the tank and I said, this definitely needs more branches. These guys like to climb around. So I added a couple more towards the back along the sides. And I'm really happy with this build. We're gonna wait about three weeks, throw in some isopods, let those roots set in and then we'll introduce the snakes, but I'm really happy with this build and I'm glad you guys are here to watch it. So let's take another look at how everything came out here. These succulents have no spines at all. They're nice and smooth. So if you're picking out succulents, don't buy any with spines like a cactus that could hurt the snake. These will grow nice and tall. There's no spines on these. Now this is the hot side where the snakes will bask. I have a nice heat bulb, a Zoomed heat bulb on this side. So it's gonna keep everything nice and dry. Let's check the temperature. So the hot side is at 90 degrees right now. So this will be the area where they'll bask. They have the heat bulb. Now these succulents will stay nice and dry. The heat will keep the soil dry. We're not gonna water this very often. These plants in the back, this one will carpet a little bit up front and you could trim it so it doesn't come all the way up front. Same thing with this one, it'll get nice and bushy. So we can actually water these we could spray these individually without spraying the rest of the tank just to keep these roots moist because these are going to need it a little bit more moist to grow, especially this fern. And these succulents, you could give them a little mist, just get the roots wet maybe once a week or once every other week. If you see the succulents starting to droop, just give a, a little bit more water, but you don't wanna spray this down every day like a regular terrarium for frogs or geckos. So this is one of my exoterras for one of my crested geckos. You could see I had a false bottom with hydrogen balls with a separation layer and then the soil on top because this is misted multiple times a day. So you wanna keep the water below the soil level so everything up here doesn't get too soggy. With this tank for garter snakes, it's gonna be a lot more dry. So you'll notice I didn't add a drainage layer on the bottom. You don't need it. You're not gonna miss this tank every day. You might miss the plants every couple of days just to keep the roots wet on the particular plants that are gonna need it but you don't want this ground cover to be wet all the time. It's not good for the snakes. There's nothing wrong with a little mist every once in a while, but you wanna keep it dry, like the climate that they come from for the most part. So this is the exact bulb that I'm using to provide light for the plants. You can see it has 64K lumens, the sun blaster bulb, the CFL. I got this bulb online for about nine bucks a while ago. I have a couple of these. They grow plants really, really good. And for the heat side, because this is not a very tall tank, you don't want something too powerful. So I picked the lowest wattage Zoomed spot basking bulb that I could find. As long as you can keep it no hotter than around 91 to 92 degrees on the hot side, that's what you want. And that's about it. It really came out nicely and I'm gonna give you guys an update once I put the snakes in. So I'm happy with the way things came out. I feel really good right now. 
by the time you actually see this video it might be the end of the weekend it might be the beginning of the week depending on how much time I have to edit and put the video together but it is the weekend I have a lot of snakes to feed so I'm gonna get going do that now and then make a nice dinner later and just relax I feel blessed that you guys are here watching all this with me and until next time I'll catch you guys in the next one. I want to say, I hope you guys continue to, whoa, damn. Look at the mess we made here, huh? Luckily, I have a lot of paper towel on hand. Clean that up real quick and continue this video. Ah, precious coffee, precious, precious coffee. Pudget sound. I have. I've heard. Uh, blah, 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 blah.